In this training video for ProCal V5, we will be covering entering calibration data. Once you've created calibration specifications on your instruments, loops, and systems options, you may then enter calibration data on the calibration section here in ProCal. Uh, as an example, we will start a new calibration by clicking the New button, and you may select what it is that you are calibrating, whether it be an instrument, a loop, a test standard, or even a system. <coughs> And if we select an instrument, you then click the option button here, and it will bring up the items that you have selected to be calibrated. Uh, as an example, this is the list of your particular instrument assets in ProCal. Uh, if we go ahead and select an example such as a temperature indicator, I will click OK, and now it gives you the options of what it is that you're doing. Uh, we will select in this case the calibration that is due. I will select OK. And now the top half of this record is the item info that is defined from the instrument section that you've set up. The bottom part of this record is what's input when the technician does the calibration. We may record temperature and humidity data and in this particular case we will say it's 70 degrees and about 32 percent humidity. You may also define different types of calibration through the list menu. Uh, in ProCal this is useful for defining different types because different types of activities may require different things. A demand calibration could mean the calibration tech was told to do the calibration now. A quality check could mean that the calibration just simply needed to be a check and that's what was done. A scheduled calibration could mean that the calibration is due so you're doing it. Or a service calibration could mean you had your item serviced by another company and you get a calibration certificate back. We will go over the management of that in just a moment. Or you do not have to select a type. Uh, you may also include certificate numbering, who did the calibration. We will select uh, John and we'll say it took him <clears throat> half an hour and if it failed, why it failed. And to do the calibration would be on your test results section here. This is where you may record your as found and as left readings and you can click this twice and it will now give you your as found as left readings and you'll notice that the separate as found as left is off. You may have it separated or not and if we select this you'll get a warning and are you sure you want to turn this off we will say yes. This is now where you can record it and as an example if we go through we would record our as found and this is just an example. and you'll now notice that our found as readings are included here. If we enter our as left readings, <clears throat> you'll now notice that as we go through and enter our readings, the readings change from red to black. As an example, if you had forgotten to put in the decimal point on this last reading, you'll now notice that it is red. This is a visual indication that the system has provided that that is an out of tolerance reading. Your technician can correct the work or he can go back and update it by including the decimal point if he forgot or any other type of mistake. A calibration can then be marked as passed, failed, or incomplete as well as adjusted to improve and we'll say in this particular case it passed. On the next tab here for your test standards this is where you can include what test standards you use to calibrate this item for reverse traceability. In this particular example, we will say we use this cal calibration uh, test standard. And on the next tab here for SOPs, if your technician forgot what he was doing and you're using the documents management section of ProCal, you can actually access your documents right from this part of the application. And if we select this procedure, it will be linked here if you've linked it, or you may embed it here and it will be embedded. On the user defined section here, calibration tabs have certainly uh, offer user defined fields. Uh, one of them, as we had noted earlier, was for the inclusion of service calibrations. If you send out your item to be calibrated and you receive a certificate back, ProCal can manage the calibration certificate by simply allowing you to select a file or enter the website that it's on. In this particular case, ProCal can manage the calibration activities, capture the dates of calibration, as well as manage all of your certifications. When the calibration is done, you may save it, 
and now we'll give you warnings based on the event as if the test standard was approved or not. In this particular case, we'll say yes, and now the calibration is saved. Your calibration report may be previewed here by selecting this, and it will have your company's name, calibration details, nominal values found as, left as, if it deviated, and even by what percent, the pass or fail, the test standards used, any notes, and who did the calibration. And as noted in a previous training video with reports, you may click it up here to print it, or you may export any of your standard reports in ProCal to multiple file formats. That's how easy it is to do calibration activity in ProCal, and this is a historical record, so ProCal will keep all of the activity on this record for any time a calibration takes place. In addition to that, there's also multi-mode, where you may do multiple calibrations at the same time, where you can turn on multi-mode. For more information on multi-mode or entering calibration data, please review. For more information, please visit Technical.